You are going to be shocked at what's about to come out of my mouth. The large RV industry actually made a well-built off-road capable trailer. As you know, we've never highlighted a trailer from the large RV industry on this channel. So as usual, make sure you stick around as I'll be sharing the three things I like about this trailer and the three things I think can be improved. Welcome everyone, my name is Don Malcolm. I'm with Affinity RV in Prescott, Arizona. I sell the new Lance Enduro camper. Let's walk and talk, shall we? Let's start at the back. So first thing you notice here, it has this swing away arm with a full size spare on it. Definitely for the off-road crowd there. And they're doing something a little bit different with this trailer. Typically in a lot of manufacturers, these outside kitchens are made with wood. And you can see everything is aluminum on this, which is great. It's not gonna rot or twist or cabinets won't open. So they're really doing it right from that standpoint. Uh, nice full guide drawers on here. And this guy happens to have a really nice two burner outside Dometic uh, uh, camp stove, which is great. By the way, while we're talking about sink related things, 40 gallon fresh water tank and a 30 gallon um, gray, gray tank on this guy as well. As you can see, instead of putting cabinets out here, they put a lot of molly panels inside and out on here. So it's nothing to rattle and fall off, which is great. And for folks who don't know what a molly panel is. Yeah. It's a military grade panel and there are accessories that clip into these panels. They have a lot of weight capacity on there. So whatever outdoor gear you have can clip into them real easy and it's really accessible. And they put them on the outside and the inside, which you'll see shortly. And the beauty is these are accessories from all over multiple markets, not accessories coming out of the trailer industry, right? Correct, correct. That's a true military panel. And it's great that they're crossing over into that and bringing that into this type of trailer. So another neat thing on here, when we get up front, we're gonna talk about the bike rack that's in there. However, this has this receiver hitch that holds 250 pounds. So you can clip additional gear, bikes, whatever you want back here, in addition to what I'm gonna show you up front, which is very cool. Uh, Truma 12 volt refrigerator that will freeze on there. And what they're doing neat is obviously this is an outside kitchen, but with this bug screen that's on here, you can turn it around and have your cooler on the inside if weather doesn't permit. And if we're looking at the sky today, we're gonna get a little rain. So uh, on there, it'll be really nice to have some inside capacity in one of these trailers. So one of the things that I love about it, as we're working our way around on here, is the exoskeleton they refer to on this guy. And what's neat about it is all the framing around here the steel, it's interconnected and screwed and bolted together and the panels slide into the slots on here. So they're not glued and screwed together like a regular RV would be, like the mass produced stuff that I carry. So way more of an off-road capacity on these guys as well. And is that Asdell or what are they using? Uh, well, it's a full composite panel. It is one solid piece with foam block in the middle of it. So nothing's gonna delaminate, nothing's gonna come apart. So moving along, uh, radius doors, this is an RV door on here, full-size RV door, which some of these, they put these smaller entry doors are hard to get in and out. I love that. So the, some of the components in here have been in the industry from Lance for years, which I love. Uh, the stairs are typical stairs you would see on one of their Lance slide-in campers on here. And what's nice when these fold up, it's got high ground clearance. Speaking of ground clearance, we're about 17 inches ground clearance on this to the lowest point underneath, which is awesome. So talking about the suspension, the, the Kurt suspension that's underneath here, it has some travel to it, which is great, and springs on there. Uh, powder coated steel uh, that's on here, and you can walk all the way on it, you could sit in, it makes a nice bench to sit on. Uh, sewer hose receptacle on here for your gray water on here. They put a couple leashes on here as well, so you can tie your pet or your, your bikes down when you're at camp to give you a little extra protection. And, and then, look at all this underbed yeah, storage. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's all underneath the bed on there. And uh, as you can see on there, you got uh, all the other utility side on the other side, including hot and cold water. So coming around to the front a little bit is they really wanted storage capacity when they built this. And this is one of the things I love is you need to keep things dry and out of the way and this is a great steel box on here with the nice rubber gasket on here as well. 
So it's going to protect your stuff from the elements outside. And then even smarter than that, this tray designed to put, let's say, firewood up there. So then you just put your netting to cover it on and it keeps the dirty stuff outside of the cabinetry, which is great. So coming around the front, um, we have an articulating hitch on here as well. So obviously we're not rock crawling in this. It's not designed for it, but you could definitely get out way out off road on here and it's not gonna beat up your suspension. It's gonna try to keep things level and stable. The, the piece that most people have been commenting on today is the bike rack that's up here. It has the capacity to handle electric bikes on here and it does have a cargo lock on there as well too. So you can tie everything down. Behind it is the 30 amp plug that comes with it. And then we can add additional solar, that plug is on there. Uh, you could put a 100 watt panel on the ground in addition to what we have going up on the top. It comes standard with one 190 watt panel and an option for a second one. So 380 watts of solar is very capable on this, plus more on the ground if you choose to do that. So now we get into the stuff that's really kind of interesting on here. Conventional trailers have been mostly on road and very little off the grid type experience stuff, right? Now we're doing it a little differently on here. So getting inside, their whole system is set up by Go Power on here. So we have, it comes standard with one 100 amp hour lithium battery. The second is optional uh, on here. 1500 watt inverter on here. Coming back around, obviously, the other side of the storage as well. And on here, you have your hot and cold water and then all your winterizing and fill valves that are in here as well uh, with a nice little sprayer on here. So, And then, again, this flooring is something Lance has been using for years, so it's tried and true where it's scratch-proof. It, it's going to handle the rough stuff in there. Another great feature, the Truma Combi system. It's a combination of gas and electric. Coming around, um, we have obviously the telescopic ladder and there is a full roof rack up on top with adjustable rails on there. So between the bike rack and the piece on the back where you can put a cargo tray or whatever you need and possibly put in your kayaks or whatever gear you have up, up top, it's pretty well done. At each corner, you have these nice LED lights. So you're gonna have 365 degrees of light around you on here when you're out in the middle of nowhere and like to see. No, no black water tank in this. So we have a cassette toilet. And people ask me all the time, why doesn't it have a black tank, right? And I'm sure your viewers probably see that all the time as well. Um, putting a whole black tank system in here adds a lot of weight on here. So most manufacturers in this outdoor crowd, they opt not to have it because of the weight. All right, we are inside the Enduro and you probably hear the rain in the background. And we've uh, acquired some new visitors behind us that are hiding underneath the lid that's on the, the back kitchen here. And that's its purpose, my friends, is to get out of the elements when you need to, whether it be sun or rain. They don't have that laminate in there that you typically see in a trailer. So there isn't going to be any peeling or anything happening that way. It's a good time to talk about what Lance does differently on all their interior panels that are in here. Um, they're not domestic. They use what they call Europly cabinetry in here. The wood that they use is formaldehyde free in here. There's no off gassing in this trailer at all. This is a brand new one, you're seeing it, and that smell doesn't exist. Lance does it a little bit differently than the mainstream doors that are out there. It has a key lock in there that isn't duplicated out there. There won't be a master key where people can get in and out of here. Even a privacy screen in here, and there's a couple little pockets in there. Instead of putting cabinets in here, they're putting these panels. And what's nice about them, it is true military grade stuff. There's all kinds of accessories you can clip in here, and you're not gonna have the opportunity for these things to fall out. On here, they use a fabric called ultra leather, and you see a lot of this in high-end uh, motorhome business. What's nice is it wipes up clean, it's easy, it's soft, uh, and you can come in here wet and it's not gonna soak through. The trailer is 72 inches wide on here, and we're getting somewhere between a queen and a king bed, plenty enough for two tall adults to sleep comfortably side to side in here. And what's nice is a lot of them are very hard to convert from dinette to bed. 
Not the case in this one. On here, the table just lifts off real easy. It sits on these, these slats that are here and the actual cushions lay out over them and you're ready for bedtime. So you guys, you're seeing this all over the place and I have it in a lot of my motorhomes, these lagoon tables that are in here. I love them because you can adjust them up and down and back and forth and move them out of the way really easy. So one of the things I like is I'm five foot 10 and I'm standing directly right in the middle of the coach and I got room above my head at the air conditioner here and much more at the back of the trailer here. So it's designed this way to capture that taller crowd that wants an area they don't have to hunch over in all the time, which carries into the bathroom as well too. So we'll get back there in a minute. But um, I did want to point out all the LED lights that are in here, they're super bright. I have some reading lamps that I haven't even turned on in here. And considering how dark it is right now with the rain, it shows light and bright in here. I could be happy dining, playing cards, just hanging out relaxing. And this is what we all do when the weather's bad, we come inside. And that's what Lance is capturing with this. And what I'm seeing different than the large RV industry, this is a very simple Spartan trailer. It's designed to be beat on. It's designed to be, make it your own, right? You're not being forced in by cabinets on the side and they're not trying to replicate a house. They're trying to make a camper. They're dual pane acrylic windows. They open out and you can get them to open almost at a complete, completely straight out with the, uh, the actual knobs that are on these. And then there's another feature that I recently found out about them is there's two different notches where you can set the hooks for these and you can let it breathe a little bit and not have it to where water's coming in. And you guys have seen these screens before, the full screen and the full blackout screen on here as well. Good storage, cubbies, wherever they can put them. Uh, and this runs off that Truma Combi for the heat. I've been selling RVs since 2009. I have not seen a mainstream RV with a 12 volt AC in it. Brand new to me. The Medic makes it. It's a super expensive piece to put in, but they want it to be compatible with that off-road crowd. So in there, with the batteries and the solar and everything, you could run this three to four hours in here, running off of that in really hot weather. Again, when the weather is extreme, too hot, too cold, too rainy, you want to come inside and have a place you're comfortable in. All right, moving along to the bathroom on here. So one of the design features they wanted is Mama wanted an indoor bathroom, right? They are not excited about being in a five gallon bucket outside, right? So we got, in essence, an indoor toilet, right? And the, uh, Dad wanted something where he can stand in the shower. So again, I'm five foot 10, and I've got a few inches above my head here, which is great. And I've got, I'm a pretty big guy, so I've got room to move and any direction on here. And then what's really nice is this cabinet does seal off, so it is waterproof, and it does have great room for towels and storage in here. Let's dive into the pros and cons of this incredible trailer. One major pro is its utilitarian style build, perfect for those seeking off-road adventures. By eliminating cabinets and introducing open spaces and molly panels, this camper becomes customizable and spacious, transforming it from a cramped hallway with cabinets and drawers to more of like a cozy open living area. The second thing I love, and you saw this coming from a mile away, it's that huge galley kitchen with the large hatch and pass-through. This is ideal for outdoor cooking while keeping odors away from our sleeping areas and providing access to the fridge from both inside and outside. And now for the final pro, which also leads me into the first con, and that is the build quality, materials used, and components on this trailer. It's almost like somebody from Lance went around an Overland Expo and took note of the best features on every off-road trailer. They integrated many of the top overlanding components. I mean, they even went as far as putting a one-up bike rack on this standard. Nobody's doing that in the overland industry unless you pay more to get it added to the build. But adding all these great components leads to a bit of a problem on this trailer, weight and height. The top of the line components contribute to a dry weight of 3,500 pounds. That's about double the weight of most top dollar overland trailers. And it doesn't stop there. 
With a 40 gallon water tank, a ton of room for additional storage, and that huge tongue box, we're talking the potential to leave your house at easily over 4,000 pounds. And a tongue weight that starts at 350 pounds before you put any gear into that larger box. Additionally, the height of the trailer is 9.875 feet, which means it's not going to fit in your standard garage, and it may pose challenges when maneuvering through tighter areas on the trail. The weight and the height is going to be a deal breaker for so many people. I just don't understand who this camper is made for. In my opinion, they have really narrowed down the niche on this one. Although this is a really nice small trailer, most people would assume it could easily be towed by a mid or full size SUV. To give you an example, a 2023 Jeep Wrangler can only tow 2,000 to 3,500 pounds. This is well out of the Jeep's towing range. Overbuilding a trailer is great and having stand-up ability, it's really priceless. But if you can't store your trailer inside and you have to upgrade your tow vehicle to something really heavy duty to support that tongue weight, all said and done, this camper is going to cost you a lot more than you think it will. Which brings me to the price. The current retail price seems to be anywhere from $72,000 to $77,000. Again, I don't want to take anything away from this build. They really did do a great job. I'm just scratching my head because wouldn't you think if somebody already had a truck of this size to tow a trailer like this, wouldn't they be better off buying a Lance truck camper instead? Maybe I'm missing something here. I think many of us would agree that truck campers are great, but for that to be an option, most of us would all need heavy duty trucks. So a small off-road camper always makes the most sense for many of us because we can tow them with our daily commuters. Well, kudos to Lance for venturing into this space with a great entry trailer, and I mean that seriously. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us next. If you wanna see a couple of small off-road trailers with standing height, but still can be stored in your garage and towed by an SUV or a small truck, check out these two videos here on the left. And as usual, stay safe on the road, and we will see you in the next episode. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Done.